Go ahead and get started. Um, I'm sorry, I think we may be a minute or two late, but that's okay. I'll get you out a minute or two later, so it'll all be the same amount of time. But good evening to you, and um, we're going to get started uh, with our Wednesday in the Word. I do have a couple of announcements I want to make. First of all, seniors, if there's any seniors in the house, um, I, I'm, be excited about it, yeah. Um, you have a Christmas lunch and dinner, um, not lunch and dinner, but lunch and dinner, um, this Saturday, and it will be at noon, correct, Mundo? Yes, correct. If you have not RSVP'd, RSVP'd to Miss Lynn or Mr. Greg or to my wife, y'all need to do that because otherwise you ain't going to have no food. So please make sure that you RSVP and, um, uh, it's going to be a great time. We always have a good time and, and enjoy ourselves. So uh, RSVP, they are right over here at this lovely table over here. Greg, wave your hand at every, okay, in case you don't know who Greg is. But yeah, it's the guy with the John Deere hat. So anyway, but um, uh, just make sure you RSVP to them and uh, would appreciate that. And then next week, ladies, next Saturday, y'all are having your Christmas dinner. And uh, so it's going to be a wonderful, lovely time and all of that. I do want to mention, because uh, there's been a little bit of question about with Sunday school, um, with the holidays and all of that kind of thing. The only day that we are not going to have Sunday school in December is going to be Christmas Eve. That's the only day. We will still have Sunday school the day of the cantata. Because the cantata will not start until 11, we can still have Sunday school at 10. So we will still have Sunday school on December 17th. Um, but then, um, excuse me, uh, on Christmas Eve, though, we're going to be having a special service at 10 o'clock. It's going to be just a short service, you know, maybe 30, 40 minutes at the most. Uh, we're going to have communion and uh, that kind of thing. And so please come out on Christmas Eve morning, if you can, at 10 o'clock. And uh, I'll get you home in plenty of time to do all your little Christmas Eve stuff that you do. Something else I wanted to mention that um, because, honestly, we get caught up in and Thanksgiving and Christmas and New Year's and all and football, of course, and all this kind of thing going on. Um, this Sunday is Mission Sunday, so please make sure if you uh, are a contributor to missions and you give in the go offering, please make sure you give your go offering this Sunday. If you don't give in the go offering, please make sure you bring a go offering this Sunday, and um, let it be a first time thing. You know, see if you can break your your trend of of not giving. So uh, that will be this Sunday. Uh, during our regular morning worship service, all right? Um, oh, I also wanted to say thank you. You know, we had that tree out in the foyer that had the tags on it for the family that we're trying to help as far as with gifts for Christmas. And the first day, all the tags were gone. So thank you so much for that. Uh, I appreciate it. I'll be putting my family's tags out there this Sunday. Uh, so just kidding. Uh, anyway, but uh, thank you so much for being so generous, and um, I'm just thrilled that we get to to help another family that you know maybe could not afford to have a really great Christmas on their own. And so, uh, just thank you so much. I know the Lord's going to bless you for your giving. All right, let's open up in prayer, and then we're going to get into the Word, and we'll see how long I keep you tonight. I don't know. You know what? I mean, y'all start taking bets as far as I'm concerned. I don't care. We'll get done when we get done. But, but let's go ahead and pray. And uh, just invite the Lord into this place tonight. Father, we come to you thanking you, Lord, for your wonderful mercy and grace. God, we thank you that you see us through all things. Lord, we thank you that we don't have to want for anything, that we don't have to be concerned about anything, Father, because we know that you have everything in your hands. And we know that you know exactly where we are. You know exactly what we're going through. And you already have an answer ready. So, Father, help us just to trust in you and to believe in you, Father. And, Lord, I pray that as we go into this Wednesday in the Word tonight, just open up our hearts and our minds to uh, receive the Word and, and what it has to say so that we can grow and we can become greater in Christ and in our relationship with Christ, but not for our glory, but for yours, Lord. And we give you praise and glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Uh, one other thing I did neglect to mention, I apologize, on the, I believe it's the Friday night, the 15th, if I'm not mistaken, we're having a middle school, high school Christmas party. So if you have middle school, high school kids, 
uh, that age, they're going to be having a Christmas party here, and it's a pajama party. However, please make them church-appropriate pajamas. Please make them, we, 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 please, in the name of Jesus, please. So, you know, if, if your girls usually, oh, I, I don't usually wear all that to, to bed. Well, you're not really going to bed. You're just wearing pajamas. Make them, make them appropriate. So anyway, but that's going to be on, uh, I, I believe it's at 6. It's at 6 o'clock. Okay. Okay. It's going to be on Friday the, four, the 15th at 6. And some of you might be saying, well, I ain't got kids that age. Well, you don't know who's watching. So there you go. Hi, everybody. All right, and for those of you who think, oh, why don't they just landscape the thing? And all, because Facebook won't let us, so talk to Zuckerberg. All right, if you have your Bibles, I want you to turn to the book of Philippians chapter 4. And um, I'm going to start at verse 4. And we're going to read through verse 8. Pretty familiar passage of Scripture here. Um, you probably... Are going to, you probably are going to recognize several verses. But Philippians chapter 4, starting in verse 4, says, Rejoice in the Lord always. And again I say, rejoice. Let your moderation be known unto all men. The Lord is at hand. Be careful for nothing, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known unto God. And the peace of God, which passeth all understanding, shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. Finally, brethren, Whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. So what I'd like to talk to you about tonight, really, it's mostly going to be verse 8. And I don't know why. Paul said whatsoever things are so many times instead of just putting commas, but you know there's commas there too. So, uh, But I, I wanted to make sure that before we get into this verse that you understand why I started where, where I did. It's always, always, always best if you are studying a particular passage of Scripture to read the Scripture in front of it and the Scripture behind it. It gives context to what's being said. There are things... Uh, you know, there are some verses, and I won't get into them now because it, it could get me off on a rabbit trail. Nobody wants that. But there are verses that a lot of people will quote that really, if you go back and you look at the context, it's not meaning exactly what you think it means. You know, Kind of like uh, in The Princess Bride. I don't know how many of you ever saw that movie. I love The Princess Bride. And uh, he said, why do you keep using that word? I do not think it means what you think it means because the guy keeps saying inconceivable. And... Um, and so, anyway, an example here is, back in the day, how many of you know who Ronnie Millsap is? Okay, everybody's holy and, and just barely raising their hand. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Ronnie Millsap, country singer, uh, blind, amazing on the piano, amazing singer. Uh, some great songs that, uh, that he wrote, if you, if you like that kind of thing. Uh, anyway, but there was a song that he did. It was, it was called Happy Birthday Baby. Anybody know that song? Okay, Joyce, come on, somebody. All right, that's what I'm talking about. Joyce will be up there. I'm, I'm a heathen. I don't mind admitting it. But the song, the chorus, or well, the, the verse starts, um, Happy, happy birthday, baby. Okay, here's the thing. Guys would dedicate that song to their woman on her birthday. But if you actually listen to the whole song, He's saying, although you're with somebody new. And he's talking about how I'm still thinking of you on your birthday, and do you remember all the good times we had before you broke up with me, you heifer? And they dedicate this song to the one they love. And it's like, y'all, listen to the whole thing before you dedicate a song, you know? Anyway, uh, Stairway to Heaven, not a Christian song you should be recommending for church. You know what I'm saying? So, so we need to do the same thing though with, with Scripture. We need to make sure that we're looking at the entire thing instead of just one little portion or cherry-picking, as some people say, because that's how cults begin. That's how wrong theology begins, is when you don't take things in, in context. So we're looking at this passage, and Paul is saying goodbye to the Church of Philippi. And if you remember, the Philippians were the only church in the book of Revelation, in the letters... Uh, 
from uh, Christ to the churches was the only, or one of the only churches, excuse me, was one of two churches that received no condemnation. All Jesus had to say was just good stuff about them. So Paul is saying to them, is saying, you know, my beloved and long for you are my joy and my crown is how he, you know, uh, describes the church at Philippi and the people at Philippi. And he's saying, you know, to, hey, you know, get you, uh, Euodius and uh, Sintath, I didn't bother to look up the pronunciation, but anyway, that they be of the same mind in the Lord. That sounds like to me that Paul was saying, uh, tell, tell those two to get their act together and stop fighting with each other and understand that they're brothers in Christ. That probably could preach by itself. And then he says, and I entreat thee also, true yoke fellow, help those women which labored with me in the gospel with Clement also. You know, saying all these things. And then he says, rejoice in the Lord always. And again, I say, I'm going to say it one more time. Just make sure you know it's important. Rejoice. You know, let your moderation, uh, and when it's talking about moderation, it's actually talking about your, your gent, uh, your, excuse me. <clears throat> I'm sorry, I read the wrong one. It's actually talking about your, yeah, your gentleness and your, your kindness, not just, I don't drink or I don't smoke or I don't cuss or, or, or I don't listen to Ronnie Millsap or whatever it is. It's, it's, it's more just your, your gentleness and your kindness, the love of Christ showing through you. We need more Christians that will show the love of Christ uh, as well as the holiness of Christ. But anyway, that's another sermon for another time. But you know, he's talking about you know, let, this, you know, let it show and, and be careful of, of, uh, you know, for nothing but in everything with prayer and supplication and thanksgiving, you know, bring your prayers before God. And then it says, and the peace that passes all understanding, you know, let it be yours. And then he goes into, finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, are honest, are just, are pure, are lovely, whatsoever things are good, reported, there be any virtue or any praise, think on these things. This verse is usually, when I hear it preached or I hear it taught, it's usually talking about how just being of a pure mind. And we most definitely should. We need to have a pure mind. We need to have a mind, the mind of Christ. We need to be, uh, have it to where, and this is where sanctification comes in. We need to have it to where our first reactions, our first thoughts, our first deeds, the first thing that we think of in a situation is what Christ would want us to be thinking, is the way that he would want us to approach a situation. Um, road rage is not thinking on the things of Christ, okay? Especially during holiday time. I don't know if any of you have seen a couple of rants I've had the past couple of days, but I can't go to Walmart anymore until December's over. I just I can't. I just can't. I'm sorry, I can't. And if I do, I'm going to have to have communion first and then altar time later. But, uh, you know, these people are just driving me nuts. But that's a whole other thing. But I'm, I'm working on that. I'm trying to get the mind of Christ. And, uh, uh, you know, and it's just a, a case of where we, we definitely need to have that holiness uh, mindset to where if, if we see or, or hear something, you know, we're not sitting there debating, uh, should I be watching this? Should I be listening to this? Should I be doing this? It's a matter of, you know, this is not pleasing to God, and you back off. But if when we take this verse in context, what Paul's specifically talking about here is anxiety, is being nervous, being wound up. He starts with saying, rejoice in the Lord, always. I don't care what your situation is. I don't care what you're going through. I don't care if every devil in hell has put a target on your back and they are sharpshooters. I don't care. Rejoice in the Lord always. And you think, why would you say something like that? How am I supposed to rejoice when I'm having a hard time financially? How am I supposed to rejoice when I've got people that are stabbing me in the back? How am I supposed to rejoice when I'm about to lose my job or, I'm, or, or my wife's about to leave me? Or you know, How am I supposed to rejoice? Here's the thing. He isn't saying rejoice because of the problem. He's saying rejoice in spite of the problem. We rejoice because God is still God, no matter what your circumstance may be. I, I, I could probably get a bunch of hands raised if I were to ask, how many of you are experiencing pain of some sort right now today? You know, I know my hand would be up and, and you know, probably several others of you, and then there'd be others who'd be like, no, I'm great. And it's like, well, that's wonderful. But, but you know, we don't rejoice because of the fact that we're in pain, but we rejoice in the fact that in spite of our pain, that we know that God is on the throne. We rejoice in the fact that despite our, our 
you know, if we're having marital problems or despite if we're having financial issues or despite if we're if our best friend just turned on us or whatever we know that the friend that sticketh closer to a bro than a brother is still on the throne and he still loves us regardless and he's still looking out for us and as long as we walk the path he has put before us we're going to get to the right place no matter what anybody else is saying we're going to get to the right place a lot of times especially this time of year uh, we we get so burned out and so overwhelmed, I think is probably the best word to describe it. We get so overwhelmed by everything that's going on. I had a meeting I was supposed to have tomorrow night, and it got canceled, and I felt like dancing because I was like, thank you, Jesus, because I don't have that on my calendar anymore. In fact, I told Crystal about it, and she said, well, take it off the calendar. She's pulling out Google and, and taking it off the calendar and everything, and it's like, I was too busy dancing. But, uh, you know, it, 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 this time of year just gets to be, okay, I got to get this, I got to get that, I got to buy these gifts for that, for that person. Okay, I still have to spend this much money. Wait a minute, I haven't even got, I got the tree out of the attic yet, and, or, or, you know, why aren't these lights working? They were, just, they were bought last year. I don't understand why Christmas lights can't last more than a year, and, you know, and all this kind of stuff. And, and just, it's one thing after another, and then you forget about the kids' play, and then you forget, you know, my wife actually uh, apparently made them change the middle school play uh, or concert time. Yes, you know you did. No, you know it was you. They were, they were going to, uh, Alan has a performance at Bonner at 6 on whatever day that is. And I, I just go when she tells me to go. And then uh, Jackson had one at 6.30. And it's like, we got to miss one of those. So my wife complained. She carried out, folks. And let me tell you, she, yeah, she said, I'm sorry, can I speak to a manager? Did you realize... Next thing I know, I'm getting an email from the principal. Apparently, we got to change the time because Bonner's having something going on and all this kind of thing. Anyway, yeah, so I just I had to throw that out because my wife gets stuff done is all that I'm saying. So, uh, But there's just so many things that we have going on this time of year. We get so overwhelmed and we just want to go sit in a corner and cry or scream, or go find somebody to punch, or something to shoot, or, or something. And, and what Paul is saying in this scripture is, here's the thing, folks. You need to rejoice because God is God. You need, you know, I mean, how sad is it that this is one of the most stressful times of year, celebrating the birth of Jesus Christ, our Savior. And we're all stressed out to the max. And he's saying, you know, be, be careful, you know, don't worry about anything. Don't, don't sit there and, come and worry and stress and bite your fingernails down to the quick and all that sort of thing. Don't do that. He said, but in everything, by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be known to God. You know what he's saying? Pray. Speak to God. What is prayer? Prayer is speaking to God. It's communication with God. What better way for you to get a grip on what's going on in your life than to take some time and speak to God, and even better than that, let Him speak to you. You shut your mouth and let God speak to your heart. That is the most overlooked part of prayer, is yielding. Because we think, okay, I'm, I'm done speaking. I don't hear anything. I guess I need to move on. Otherwise, I'm going to look like a crazy person. No. The Lord's waiting for your heart and your mind to still so that he can then begin to pour himself into you. And then he says, and the peace. It's not, a, it's not a coincidence that he says, the peace of God that passes all understanding shall keep your hearts and minds through Christ Jesus. And then he says, finally, whatsoever things are pure, or whatsoever things are, are uh, true, rather, excuse me, and honest and just and pure and lovely and are of good report, report if there be any virtue or any praise whatsoever, Think on those things. What is Paul telling us there? When you begin to get so stressed out because it seems like the world is coming against you, stop thinking about how the world is coming against you and start thinking about how God is for you. When you get to that place, and I'll just, I'm going to be transparent with you. One of the things I have tried to do in my ministry is just, just show you that I'm, I'm just a, a man. 
and a, a, a lunatic in some people's minds. But anyway, but I'm just I'm just a man. There is no piety whatsoever. I am. I'm gonna knock them out anyway. Because if there was, I wouldn't have knocked them out. I would have been like, oh, bless them, Jesus. Anyway, but you know, the, I, I try to be transparent. And I've had, uh, I had a, a pastor tell me that I don't need to be transparent because the people can't see weakness in me. And I'm like, but no, but it, that's, I want them to see that I am weak because then I can show them how God has, has brought his strength and brought me through that. So I'm just going to be completely honest with you for a moment. I've been... Uh, for, I don't know, probably the past month or so, I've been kind of in a, a bad place as far as in my spirit. Um, now, I want to clear this up before anybody starts guessing, because anytime something like this happens, people are like, I wonder what he's doing. <laughs> I have not fallen off the wagon. I don't have a girlfriend on the side. I'm not watching stuff and getting involved in stuff I'm not supposed to be getting involved with. Crystal and I are fine. I'm just throwing that out there before I say anything else. But I've been just kind of in a place where I've, I've really felt uh, really felt the attack of the enemy. Um, especially in those, those quiet moments of the night, you know, when you're trying to get to sleep, or if you have a, just a, a, a quiet moment where you can just sit and, okay, you know what, I'm just going to sit here and look at my phone for a little bit or whatever it is. And it seems like then that's when it kind of begins to start. And it's even little things, but they get blown up so much. You know what? If, if we would magnify the name of Jesus Christ as much as Satan magnifies our problems in our eyes, we would get this world saved, and there wouldn't be any problem with it. Because Satan will take something that is small and insignificant and make it seem like your world is coming to an end. And he does that with preachers too, just to let you know. We're not over at the parsonage 24-7, you know, look what the Lord has done. And, and I, I, no, we're not like that. And there are times that you get that text message and you roll your eyes. There's that time, those times when you, you know, you begin to hear about a problem and, and you're just, you're wanting like, can you all just grow up for once? You know, I mean, these things, I mean, it's just being real with you, just being transparent with you. And um, if you're offended, I apologize because maybe I'm not talking about you but maybe I am. But anyway, um, no, but I, I've just really been battling with some things, um, and it seems like it's coming from every angle. And even just this morning, as I was dealing with something like that, and I was thinking about, I was trying to, I was trying to get positive, and I was like, okay, you know what? If the only problem I got going on is this and this and this, and then all of a sudden the enemy said, hey, don't forget about these two. I literally had not been thinking about those because of what else was going on. And then Satan's like, oh, wait, hold, hold on. We're not done. Hold on. And coming from this side of the stage, would you welcome? And, and brought it in. And I'm telling you, I got so upset because I was, I was trying to do some work for another pastor friend of mine who's writing a book. And, and he asked me who my editor was on my book. I said, well, it was me. And he goes, oh, well, you want to edit mine? And I'm like, okay. So now I'm, I'm doing that, but no, I don't mind. I, I'm, glad, I'm glad to be able to help. This probably isn't the best time of year, but I'm glad to be able to help. But I was supposed to be doing that, and I had some worship music going on and all that, and, and just it was just all just a bunch of chaos and cacophony and all that. It just going on in my head. I finally just had to stop, and I was like, I'm going to go change the sign. Yes, I finally changed the sign. For those of you who have said, how long are we going to honor the veterans? Forever. But... Um, <laughs> But anyway, I, I did finally change the sign. And so the cantata is on no matter what because it's in black and white now. But um, so I put on my headphones and I was listening to some praise music and, and getting the letters out and everything like that. And I stopped at one point and there was just one little thing that happened and it felt like it set me off. And I stood there and I could feel tears welling up in my eyes and I'm like, Lord, what is going on? What is going on? How much more are we going to pile on top of this very large steaming pile of you know what? You know? And the Lord just actually convicted me. Not real bad, but a little bit. Convicted me. Because of 
the fact that my focus was no longer on him. I was trying to have prayer time. I was trying to seek God. Chris was out doing uh, some errands that she had to do. So I'm at the house by myself trying to pray. And I couldn't get through because all this other stuff. And I felt so convicted. And the song even didn't even have anything to do with that. So the Holy Spirit just hit me with it. I felt so convicted because I had allowed all this nonsense, all this garbage that Satan wanted to throw into my heart and into my spirit and into my mind. I had allowed all this to come in and it blocked my focus from being on God. And I had to put the letters down for a moment. I had to take a moment and pray. And I just asked the Lord to forgive me. I didn't ask him to take care of any of the problems. I said, Lord, forgive me for not having my focus where it's supposed to be. Forgive me that I've got this attitude. Forgive me that I'm, I feel like I'm falling apart. Forgive me, Lord. I'm sorry because my focus needs to be on you, not just today, but always. I'm not just rejoicing in the Lord now. I'm rejoicing in the Lord always. And so I began to feel a little bit better, and I got the sign done and all that kind of thing. And you know, I'm, I'm doing okay for a little while, and then more stuff. And I'm telling you, it just it was getting to me. I was in the shower, and I was getting ready for, uh, for tonight and all this kind of thing. And I get myself dressed, and I, I told Crystal, I said, I've got to go to my office. I've got to go to my office and just be quiet and just study and just follow the leading of the Lord. And this is what the Lord brought me to. In those times of the stress, in those times of the sorrow, in those times of the, the grief and pain, in those times of the, the anger, in those times of the feelings of betrayal. Anybody here ever been betrayed? Yeah, I thought so. That's one thing I think every one of us have in common. In those times, get your focus off of that. And I know it seems easier said than done, but believe me, through the Spirit. Because in our weakness, His strength is made perfect. And the Holy Spirit will bring to your mind, just as quickly as Satan tries to bring to you all the problems, the Holy Spirit will turn right around and knock those out and begin to bring to you your blessings. And begin to bring to you the, the fact, you know, what about the fact that you're mine? It's kind of like when I was preaching Sunday about God said. You're mine. You've given your heart to me. You've given your life to me. You live for me. You're mine. Do you understand how many people on this planet, if they were to leave the earth right now, would not be an eternity with God, but instead would be in a devil's hell? Because they've not given their heart and life to Jesus Christ. Do you understand how many people on this earth that if they run into a physical problem, all they have to rely on is the doctors. And we all know that doctors, God bless them, and I appreciate them and all that kind of thing, but they're not perfect. And they're going to make mistakes, and some of them are just going to give up and say there's nothing we can do and just leave you alone. But I don't have to do that because I know that by his stripes I'm healed. I have the most wonderful wife on the planet. And I know, and I'm blessed. And everybody else tells everybody, everybody in the world tells me, you married up. You got lucky. And I'm like, yeah, you meant that as an insult, but I'm in full agreement with you. I'm on your side. I got lucky. I have amazing children. They drive me nuts, but they're amazing. And I wouldn't trade almost anything in the world for them. I mean, I haven't been offered everything, so I can't say every, anything, but, you know, we'll see. But there's, I mean, I'm at a church that has some of the best people that you'd ever want to meet. Some of the most wonderful people. And now I get an amen, Diane? <laughs> I may not even been talking about you. I'm just kidding. I want to hear that on Sunday, though. No, but I, I'm, I'm, a, I'm pastoring a church with some of the most wonderful, gracious people on the planet. And I know pastor friends of mine right now that are just looking for someplace else to go because they're tired of being abused by the congregation that they've got. You know, I mean, I know that I'm blessed, but in those moments when Satan's coming at you, it's hard to keep your eyes on that. But that's exactly what Paul commands us to do here. That's exactly what he says. 
He says, if you're rejoicing in God always, think about this for a moment. This is how I'm, I'm saying these all go along, and this is in context. If you are rejoicing always over everything, where does Satan come in? How can, how can Satan push aside the Holy Spirit and say, hold on a second, hold on, I got something to say here. Oh no, it doesn't work that way. If you are rejoicing, if you know, if you're stuck in traffic, you know, just like I, from what I understand, there was an accident or something over in Monk's Corner, and traffic was awful, and all this kind of thing, and uh, either that or it was an excuse by somebody. But anyway, no. But if, if you're stuck in traffic, it's frustrating. I don't know why it's so frustrating, but oh my lord, you just want to get out and find the nearest crowbar and go help somebody meet Jesus. But anyway. Um, but how about instead of focusing on the fact that you're stuck in traffic, what if our, our mind were to instantly go because we're all already rejoicing because we're all already in that place. If we were to go, you know what? I just thank God that I've got a car. I thank God that in this cold weather that I'm in the car with the heat on and I'm nice and toasty or whatever. And, you know, and, and, um, and I mean, I've got plenty of gas in the car, and so even over here for a little bit, the thing is, I wasn't involved in that accident. You'll begin praying for the people that were in the accident instead of focusing on, oh, I'm going to be late, and I'm supposed to be there already, and oh, I hate traffic, and uh, it's been a, such a horrible day. You know, okay, you may have had a horrible day, and now you're stuck in traffic, but what about the day that the people had that were in the accident where all the ambulances and the fire trucks are at? How about the day that they're having? You know, it's all about us being in the right mindset, but we don't get in the right mindset if our minds aren't always on God. If our mind and our focus isn't always on God, we're going to allow those things to come in. Now, I don't say that in a way where I'm bashing anybody, I promise, because every single last one of us go through it. Every last one of us. I don't care how holy and righteous you are. You might even be as holy as a reedling. I don't know. You notice I said a, a reeling because you may be holier, Ms. Evelyn. I don't know. But anyway, no, but I mean, you might, you might just be, you know, I mean, it's like there's the Trinity and then just a little bit of space and then you. But yet you're still going to go through those times. You're still going to have those times of weakness. You're still going to have those times where you feel overwhelmed by what the world's giving you. You're still going to have those times of tribulation. You're still going to have those times where your, your family turns their back on you. You're still going to have those times where you just can't seem to make two ends meet. And, and, and the, uh, the time for them meeting is coming to an end. And you know, you're still going to have those times when you're going to have a fight with your husband or a fight with your wife, and you just want to knock them in the head with something, and, and then you realize you were the one who was wrong, and now you've got to go say you're sorry, and that's just killing you and eating you up inside. You're going to go through those times. But what I'm saying is that we can drastically reduce the effect that has on our lives if we will recognize them and then immediately go to God. Not just say, Lord, deliver me from this. But it says, they were overcomers by the word of their testimony. By the blood of the Lamb and the word of their testimony. Satan will not stick around if you're having a praise fest. Satan will not stick around if all you're doing is every time he hits you, you're just telling God how wonderful he is. If every time he knocks you down, you're getting up saying, Lord Jesus, thank you for the strength to get back up and for, to dust myself off because I know I'm walking with you and I know you're right here with me. Um, psalm 91, a very famous psalm, and most, most of you know it and probably know it by heart. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. He that dwelleth. In the secret place of the Most High shall abide, shall live, shall rest. That word means under the shadow of the Almighty. Here's the thought I want to leave with you. What time have we got? I win. Here's the thought I want to leave with you with this verse. He that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide where? Under the shadow of the Almighty. The only way you can be in something shadow if it is if it's in proximity. The only way, I can't be in the shadow of the Eiffel Tower. It doesn't work that way. Not unless I'm in Paris. And then the light shines, and the, sh and the object blocks that light, and then I'm in the shadow. The only way we can be in the shadow of the Savior is if we're in the proximity of the Savior.
That means that no matter what you're going through, He's close by. No matter what you're facing, He's close by. You aren't alone. I will never leave thee nor forsake thee. There's never going to be a time, as long as you are a child of God, there will never, ever, ever, ever be a time where you are alone because at the worst point, you're in the shadow of the Savior. And He's saying, I'm coming. I'm coming. I'm right here. I haven't left you. I see right where you are. You're in my shadow. You're in that secret place. You're in that place of hiding. You're in that place of restoration. You're in that place where you can just relax and be still and know that I am God. So, I was probably preaching more to myself today than anything else, to be honest with you. Teach more to myself. But I encourage you, as your, I mean, even after the the holidays are over and you know we're into 2024 and we're like, all right, well, when's Groundhog Day and all that sort of thing. I encourage you when life just gets to be to a point where it's just too much. You'll be able to turn to Him if you're already in a mindset of rejoicing because of what God has given you. If you live in that mindset. If you dwell in the, the secret place of the Most High, you will, you'll face those problems, but you won't be mired there. You're not going to be stuck there. It may take some time, depending on the, the level of the problem. It may take some time to be delivered from it. But God is faithful. And what you need to do is whatsoever things are just are honest, are true, are lovely, are of good report, if there be any virtue or any praise whatsoever, you know what, get your mind on those things. What is greater than who God is and who He is to us? Amen? All right. All right, I was hoping to make this a little short tonight, so it's, it's a little short tonight. That's about it. But I, I appreciate each and every one of you. Don't forget about our announcements. And I just, I, I'm, I'm praying for you, and as I dismiss us tonight. I'm going to pray for you again, but uh, I'm praying for you, and I'm hoping you're praying for me, and you definitely need to pray for Crystal, because you've got me to deal with, but in this really busy time, this really overwhelming time, think on the things of the Lord. Rejoice in the Lord. Have peace. And let the peace that passes all understanding take root in you. And you're going, to, you're going to make it. You're going to be just fine. Let's pray together. Lord, we just thank you, Father, because we know that we can think on the things that you have given us. And Lord, just thinking on those things, it's going to drive out all the things the enemy tries to get us to focus upon. All the, the trouble, all the tribulations, all the difficulties, all, all the things that are just causing us to want to pull our hair out and scream, God, as we focus on you and give you praise, Lord, you're going to push every one of those things out and you're going to give us that peace that passes all understanding, that makes no sense is how we could word it. The peace that just doesn't make sense because it's so great and it's so present even in the midst of our greatest trouble. And Lord, I pray that our focus will be on you. God, I ask you to forgive me for the times that I've allowed my focus to wander that I've allowed my focus to dwell on the things of, uh, that the enemy has tried to put into my life, that the enemy has tried to get me to focus on the, the troubles that, that I've gone through. Lord, forgive me for my focus not being where it is and help me to be more at a place, Lord, where I, I'm at that place where I can just rejoice in you and I can rejoice in the things you've done. And Lord, I pray for this congregation as well, Lord, that you will help them. Lord, as they face troubles, they face trials, as they get to a place where they feel like that there's no hope, God, show them your, your, their hope. And show them that in their darkness, they're abiding in the shadow of the Almighty. It's just the shadow of the Savior. And Lord, I thank you and I praise you for all that you give us and all you do for us. Keep us safe as we go home. We give you glory and honor in Jesus' name. Amen. 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 I forgot to ask if anybody had anything to say. Let me just ask real quick. Anything?